Computing power, as we know it today, is fast approaching its peak. In 1975, Gordon Moore stated that every two years the processing power of computers would double. This law remained true until 2012 when the curve started flattening. This was due to transistors and their limitations. Transistors had become so small that the progress had started growing to a halt. Currently, a transistor is eight times smaller than the HIV virus and 500 times smaller than a red blood cell. This brings me back to my opening statement. Computing power as we know it today is fast approaching its peak. This is due to the fact that if one can no longer decrease the size of transistors, one cannot increase the number of transistors, and therefore one cannot increase the processing power of a computer. One way of increasing the processing power of computers is through the creation of quantum computers. All computing systems rely on fundamental ability to store and manipulate information. Quantum computers manipulate individual bits, which store information as binary zero and one states. Quantum computers leverage quantum physics principles and mechanical phenomena to manipulate information. To do this, they rely on quantum bits, or qubits. The fundamental difference here is that a bit is binaric, and it can only be in a one or a zero state. A qubit, however, can be in both a one, zero, or both at the same time. This physics principle is known as superposition, and is one of three that make up the fundamentals of quantum computing. The second is entanglement. This is the idea that one is able to link these qubits in order to exponentially harness their power. The final physics principle is that of interference, and this is very similar to what we experience with noise cancelling headphones. It essentially cancels out the incoming sound waves through producing the inverse of those sound waves. Let's use a quick example. You have four cards. Three are kings, one's a queen. All are face down, and we need to find the queen. A normal computer would start at the first card and carry on going. It would take a normal computer an average of 2.5 turns to find the queen. However, with a two-qubit quantum computer, it would always get the queen on the first turn. Why? Every qubit that is entangled increases the processing power by 2 to the power of n, where n is the number of qubits. Thus, in a 2-bit quantum computer, you're able to see all four states at once. But why is this relevant? This is relevant because of exponential scaling. Sure, 2 to the power of 2 is only four states, but 2 to the power of 10 is over a thousand states, and 2 to the power of 31 is over 2 billion states. This means that if you had two billion cards with only one queen, the quantum computer could find the queen on the first move. IBM currently have a 53-bit qubit quantum computer. This mammoth amount of processing power becomes a worry when we think about prime factorization. Prime factorization is based on Shaw's algorithm and it is the basis of almost all encryption in modern society. Quantum computers can reverse prime factorization in a dangerously short amount of time. This time taken to reverse engineer prime factorization decreases drastically with the number of qubits the quantum computer has. This means that the basis of all encryption as we know it could be volatile. This will have a massive effect on audits and all the industries. With companies thinking their systems are secure whilst actually being vulnerable. With this amount of processing power, quantum computers could perform DOS attacks, completely paralyzing the computer's infrastructure of companies and bring operations to a halt. Furthermore, in the future, quantum computers will be able to decrypt encryption and hack passwords in a matter of hours. This means that in the near future, business will need to rethink everything they regard as secure. The uses for quantum computing are endless. In the financial services, the processing power will assist in the analysis of big data. As big data emerges and companies start coming to the realization that data is essential for forecasting, they may want to analyze data sets that are far too large for the average computer. Here, a quantum computer will perform this task exponentially quicker. Quantum power, as we know it today, is slowly becoming a thing of the past. Even though quantum computers are not here to replace normal computers, they will soon become the new norm for operations that require high amounts of processing power. This technology will not only affect the way operations take place, but will affect the whole way enterprises view data security.